Ryan, thank you so much for such a passionate introduction. I can't believe that as skiers we're all here on a powder day, but let's make the most of it by tackling a problem that skiing has faced for a long time, and that's getting young people like me into the mountains. See, I was lucky. I had great parents who raised me as a skier to appreciate things like one more run under the soft light of late afternoon Alpenglow. Well, that is until I came of age and grew into an appreciation of opera. But that's kind of where the fun stops. This is a pretty ugly graph with an even uglier message. And it's that the year-over-year -year participation makeup of millennials who are skiers is on the decline, almost 6%. And I don't think it's a marketing problem. I don't think a millennial sees a picture as beautiful as this and couldn't see themselves having an experience here. Rather, I think it's the way we serve our product up to millennials that's not palatable to their buying behaviors. Because millennials are traveling more than ever before. Spend is up almost 8% from 2016 to 2017. Millennials took on average of three and a half vacations, and 35% of them reported wanting to take more vacations in the next year. But we're different. We're impulsive, we're non-committal, and we're price sensitive not towards the hard cost of the good that we're buying, but the perceived value of that good. Look at low-cost air carriers as an example of a successful industry with millennials. I can get on a plane in Reno to Denver for $150. Maybe I have to sit in a middle seat or buy a soda, but that's fine. Uber, when they first launched, cost one and a half times as much as a standard cab to go the same distance in San Francisco. Yet millennials flocked to this platform not because it was cheaper, but because it embodied our buying behaviors. Compare that to a ski vacation, where the most dynamic the pricing gets is a half a day, a full day, a pack of days, or a season's pass, let alone the lodging restrictions that we put on anybody trying to stay at our resort destinations. We're trying to make millennials plan and they're not going to. The data shows it, and we feel it. As it stands, they're not coming to resorts. They're not staying at your hotel. They're not renting your equipment. But I have a plan, and it's big picture, and it's idealistic, and it's a bit inspired by the Great Vale Resorts presentation that we heard yesterday. But for one minute, imagine a mountain where you don't pay by the days that you ski rather by the runs that you take with different chairs in different parts of the mountain, costing different amounts, even on different days. Because it blows my mind that Chair 5 in Vail, which serves, in my opinion, some of the best terrain in North America, costs the same to ski technically as Chair 6 in Vail, which serves mostly beginner terrain and a race course that's closed to the public. Now, the technological leap we would have to make in order to make this happen isn't huge. Every time I ski under an Epic Mix banner or through an RF scanner, I think how cool would it be if we could give somebody a pass for free and it wouldn't charge them until they skied under that banner. Now, I would be remiss working for Expedia if I didn't tell you that we also see massive demand patterns out of major metropolitan areas for neighboring epic and iconic resort destinations. And I have a feeling the people who are making those searches look a lot like this group here. We need to make skiing so accessible that a millennial in Denver can go skiing in Steamboat, or in Park City, or Salt Lake City can go to Park City, or New York can go up to Stowe. But we don't get there by looking down. We need to look up. Skiing went through a period of growth, and the next era of skiing will be a period of innovation. Uber is inventing self-driving cars. Amazon has grocery stores where you don't even need to visit a register. Expedia is working on voice search for travel. And it's all to accommodate the buying behaviors of millennials, a very important demographic. So it's time that we as an industry do the same thing and think about these values of choice, convenience, access. Now, I want to thank you for listening to me today. But what I really want to be thankful for is in 20 years, when I'm sitting in the audience listening to some future travel disruptor plead the case of their generation, 
I can say that we did everything to sustain a sport that we love in places that we cherish. Thank you.